Among all the ocean travellers, humpback whales are gigantic in size. Over the year, they wander around in the oceans between their hunting and breeding areas. They cover astounding distances, even for 45-foot, 50-ton giants. Warm tropics see their arrival in the months of winter as they hope to meet their ideal mate. Males showcase their enormous strength by slapping their tail flukes and croon to attract females and keep rivals at bay. The warm waters here are safe and make ideal nursery grounds for females to breed and bring up their children. The calves develop fast in these conditions and grow a thick coating of blubber that is vital to endure the icy waters that lie ahead. With their mother's gentle push, the calves come up to the surface for air, which they need more frequently than adults. Food is scarce in these warm seas, which hardly produce anything for the adults to eat. So it's just a matter of time before the herd starts exploring new areas seeking food. Females and calves lead the group. These females haven't tasted food for months, yet surprisingly have enough strength to suckle their offspring while traveling. The whales have visibly grown thinner after four months of depending on only body fat to stay alive. It is these physiological changes and requirements that fuel the need to migrate. The whales can discern the Earth's magnetic fields and draw on this ability to travel northwards. to start the journey are the adult males, impelled by their ever-increasing hunger. What greets them ahead is 3,000 miles of ocean, a seemingly endless journey they too will make, hungry and without food. They trail the coast of Mexico and North America to reach the Arctic. Days and nights pass as they travel without break, covering more than 500 miles a week. This journey, undertaken by the humpback, is among the longest migrations by any animal. And this is their destination, the icy, bountiful seas of Alaska. After having an empty stomach for five months and crossing thousands of miles, they look almost cheerful. The seas are exploding with small fish, the reason for their journey. Their appetite is as huge as their size and they munch down a ton of fish a day, a meal they have worked very hard for. Springing up from under the surface, they swallow gallons of water at a time with their cave-like mouths. A good measure of this food will be stocked up for their southbound return journey. But as of now, they indulge themselves in the fruits of their arduous ocean odyssey. More than 20,000 geese have had a good time in the pleasant winter of these bountiful marshlands of New Mexico. 
Warming the air, enveloping them, spring alerts the flocks to abandon their present shelter and commence an amazing journey. They start a flying achievement that sees them undergo a truly remarkable migration. Their journey ends hundreds of miles from here. Leaving New Mexico, they must travel to the Arctic where they can rear their chicks in the short summer. Exact timing is critical to escape the harsh Arctic winter. Innumerable snow geese will flap their way over 3,000 miles crossing the continent of North America to get to their nesting sites. They fly over known territory. Their streamlined bodies, delicate bones, and energy-efficient flight make certain these sky wanderers cover long distances without tiring. But even these aerial marathoners require refueling. Fields now substitute their traditional marshlands, but the snow geese have adjusted well to make good use of the ample pickings of farmers' harvests. Bit by bit, they clean up the leftovers of the crop, eating split grain and corn cobs. They adhere to a strict schedule to reach in time to take advantage of the brief Arctic summer. The extending daylight is a signal that drives them forward towards their Arctic breeding grounds. find their way over such vast distances, they use a range of signs. The location of the sun and moon, the familiar sights below, and shifts in the Earth's magnetism show them the direction to follow. In just a matter of two months, they will reach northern Canada. The genuine high flyers that they are, they can fly up to an altitude of 10,000 feet where the icy thin air is less resistant and helps in cooling overworked muscles. Past these most northerly trees stretch the open lands of the tundra that have just started to melt. Their arrival is towards the end of winter. The icy blanket over the tundra gives way for only a few months. A great reward awaits the tired travellers. The sun never sets in the summer here, and with the melting of the snow, the snow geese and their offspring will have plenty of plants to feed on. They accomplish their journey through teamwork. Leading in turns, they make the journey in skeins, and the ones that follow conserve energy in their slipstream. The lucky ones who have found their partner will make these grand journeys together for the rest of their lives. Exhibiting remarkable precision, the geese end their aerial odyssey and make a return to their old nesting grounds. This magnificent collection of monarch butterflies is a truly incredible sight, as they have outlived one of the greatest animal migrations. 
They have rested over winter, bundled together for warmth. Opening eyes to the spring sun, they stir in their multitudes. They mate in the oil mill firs, rising from their branches. The monarch butterflies enjoy the ideal weather in these Mexican glades that serve as a winter refuge. Now, a final expedition calls them to forego their shelter and travel hundreds of miles from here. Although they have sufficient energy to embark on this long trip, only the yet-to-be-born caterpillars will make it through. The females who have recently mated are in search of the special source of food that will nourish their offspring. On instinct, they travel north to commence their hunt in the United States. These tiny aerial athletes can reach the border in less than a month. This is what they are after, milkweeds. These are the only source of nourishment that their caterpillars require. So finally, she can lay her eggs. She distinguishes this plant from others using her feet, which can sense taste. An energizing drink of nectar imbibed through her proboscis is a welcome drink. The monarchs also profit from milkweed by consuming its poison. Their distinguished pattern has evolved to caution predators that they are unpalatable. The strenuous task of laying hundreds of eggs lies before the female. But as the newborn caterpillars may feed on each other, only one or two eggs per plant is all she can lay. She goes on journeying north where she will deposit as many eggs as she can before she perishes as a result of this draining task. An adult butterfly comes out of its chrysalis. The metamorphosis from caterpillar to adult is complete in five weeks. The onus is on the next generation of monarchs to carry on the pursuit of milkweeds. The nectar of the spring flowers becomes the first liquid food for these champion flyers. Now they can commence their long journey. Still, these healthy young ones just have a month to mate and produce the maximum possible number of eggs before they breathe their last. Six months and 3,000 miles later, the butterfly marathon ends its summer range in Canada. Three or four generations of these tiny flyers have toiled to complete the migration. They have arrived at the northern end of the milkweed, so the journey is over for the monarchs. Amazingly, the voyage is not yet over. It is the start of an incredible adventure for the adults that are born this far north. This monarch and innumerable others now make a 3,000 mile return trip to their small Mexican shelter in one go. Making use of powerful tailwinds, they can cover around 100 miles every hour and will see their abode in only two months. A lot of them will have perished when the Odyssey ends, but those alive would have completed one truly remarkable journey that is unparalleled by any other insect. Caribou are capable of traversing several hundred kilometers over some of the world's harshest terrains. The males have bulked up to compete as the journey halts in autumn. Caribou do not pair and lead a nomadic life. 
Bulls have the battle to procreate, which makes sure that the offspring will have the strongest and healthiest genes of the herd. Leaving behind their winter refuge in central Alaska, the expectant mothers will travel vast distances in search of food and a secure place to raise their newborns. The splayed furry hooves of the caribou, along with dew claws, assist them in traveling through deep snow. Caribou use these large, hard-edged hooves to dig through the snow and uncover lichens that are buried beneath. These lichens sustain them in the winter, but this is no easy task. Each of them might dig a hundred craters a day, looking for lichen, and will have to fight for the best spots. Tough natural conditions are not the only problem that threatens their odyssey. Wolves have been hunting caribou since ages. The browsing caribou often make an easy prey. Inside the forest, the wolves have an upper hand as they plan a surprise attack on the unsuspecting caribou. However, caribou have learnt from past experiences that any ambush can be thwarted if they remain vigilant and keep the enemy at a safe distance. The great journey towards the north is in progress. They are headed to the Arctic tundra, which is a thousand miles away. They have to journey through extensive mountain ranges to the flat plains that lie ahead and make use of the shallow snow in the windswept ridges. The pregnant females stop at regular intervals to feed and relax. They move ahead in a single line as they break the snow trail turn by turn. They conserve energy on this arduous journey by trekking three to four miles per hour. Every female schedules her arrival to match with the Arctic spring. The herd reaches the calving grounds after a two-month journey. These grounds provide the newborn offspring with a safe environment to grow as predators are rare this far north. Thousands of bulls complete this testing adventure separated from the females. The bountiful valleys provide them with ample nourishment. For the next autumn rut, an essential diet is needed by these males to grow new coats and antlers. Even though the vegetation is aplenty, they are forced to leave by an improbable predator. The mosquitoes persistently attack the caribou. These tiny predators can suck three pints of a caribou's blood per week. The snow patches offer a transitory respite as the herd carry on their journey towards the coast. The Arctic Ocean plays a significant role in their odyssey. The bulls and cows gather here to form a massive herd of caribou. They prepare for their return trip as there is enough vegetation to feed on. The caribou start moving towards the south by the end of July. Caribou are outstanding swimmers and they cross the now ice-free rivers. To reach their final destination, caribou might have to traverse many rivers, but their journey on land is unmatched by any other terrestrial creature. Salmon spend years in the ocean and then return to the rivers where they were born. When young, these sockeye salmon had migrated towards the sea in search of food. However, as the day shortens, their instincts impel them to return to their birthplace. Thousands of salmon congregate near the coastline from all over the expansive Pacific Ocean. 
Then they proceed towards the estuaries of the rivers of Alaska. The resolve to find their way home when it is time for them to reproduce is one of the most remarkable and mysterious feats of nature. It is believed that the sun and the Earth's magnetic field help them in navigation. The incredible precision of their journey is fascinating. Their bodies have to adjust to the fresh waters as they travel upstream. An amazing adventure beckons them. Not all will be able to complete this journey. Several die of exhaustion and are eaten by scavengers like eels. However, the rapids and waterfalls of the swift flowing Alaskan rivers provide them with their biggest challenge. The salmon can jump 12 feet up the waterfalls through exceptional effort. They struggle up the waterfall just to encounter a more dangerous adversary, the grizzly bear. These grizzly bears assemble at the rivers, eagerly awaiting the salmon's expected return, and the salmon do not disappoint. For the skilled grizzly, they're an easy meal. The younger bears, though, have a tough time catching the slippery fish. Unfortunately, many salmon lose their lives at this stage. It is caviar for the bears, but the death of these eggs marks an abrupt end to the future of the salmon. Several of them are successful in escaping these predators and continue with their thousand mile journey. As the rivers converge and the waters become shallow, their sharp sense of smell guides them to the breeding grounds where they were born. The urge to procreate motivates these fish to overcome the relentless force of the current as they continue on their extraordinary mission. The salmon also become easy targets to aerial predators due to the shallow waters. Just prior to spawning, the sockeye salmon undergo striking changes in their color and shape. The male's jaws transform and grow a vicious set of teeth. They have to compete with each other to win the right to the best females. Once paired, the female digs a shallow nest on the riverbed before laying her eggs. The male then fertilizes them. Having mated, finally, thousands of heavily fatigued salmon now perish in these waters. The adventure is over. The sockeye salmon die in the very same riverbeds that they were born in.